Hello everybody, it's Murder Muffin here on the Geek Experience YouTube channel, and today we're talking about the Nintendo Labo VR. So Nintendo has hit us with a fourth round of Labo sets, this time with virtual reality being the focal point. Now I don't think it's going to be a game changer in the VR world, but starting at 40 bucks seems like a good way for Nintendo to get in on what has been a fairly expensive market. Now there are two main packages you can buy. The first coming out with a VR headset base, a spinning pinwheel, and a blaster. And the second adding a camera, a bird, an elephant, and a wind pedal. Some pretty crazy things to be making out. A cardboard but it is nintendo and nintendo can do anything also a lot of people have been suggesting that the camera might be a signifier of a new version of the pokemon snap game from 2000 1999 if you're in japan but i haven't seen anything confirming that though it would be pretty cool but it does seem like a lot of people have been having trouble finding the complete bundle the one that comes with like the elephant and the bird maybe it's because older groups of labo sets like kind of sat on shelves for a while and they didn't really sell too well but of like the three or four stores we went to they only had the starter kit which actually ended up being a blessing in disguise because building these things is not the fun part for me it took about an hour to finish the base headset maybe 20 minutes on the pinwheel and about two hours and 30 minutes on the blaster the labo cartridge that goes in your switch operates as the mini games for the game but then also the instructions so four hours isn't too long to put something together but the battery life on the switch isn't that long so you'll either have to stop a few times to charge it or leave it docked up and playing on the TV instead of having it like right next to you. Plus having to stare at a screen and using a controller to progress steps just takes a lot longer than flipping through the pages of a manual, kind of like what you get with Legos or with like Bionicle or something like that. That and the music that they play during the actual building part is just terrible, absolutely awful. <laughs> But once you do actually finish putting the whole thing together, it is a lot of fun. And this is my first time building a Labo, so I was surprised to see how solid it feels. Like, yeah, it's made out of fairly thin cardboard, but it's by no means flimsy. I guess folding it over itself a few times gives it a comfortable sense of durability. But yeah, I feel totally comfortable using this to hold my Switch with no fears of it breaking, which is nice. I wanted to test the device outside. The whole selling point behind the Switch for me is its portability, and most other VR devices require too large or stationary of a setup. So I took this VR outside. And while it might look a bit strange to the people around you, it actually works really good. Your Nintendo Switch fits perfectly inside of the headset, I mean obviously, but it's a real nice snug fit with uh, some phone padding so that your Switch doesn't move around too much or possibly fall out or scratch or anything. The Switch's gyroscopics actually follow really smoothly with your movements, and most games don't require you to move too much anyway, so there isn't really any risk of falling over or harming yourself or your super expensive Switch. This is really cool feature that like I really love, uh, where you'll just tap part of the top right of the device, which kind of acts as an action button or command, so you don't always have to use your Joy-Con, or when you're using any of the attachments, you don't have to pull the Joy-Con out of there. It works apparently by like detecting the motion. There's no button, it just kind of detects it, which is kind of cool that it's able to be that precise. And as far as the attachments go, the windmill is pretty lame. It acts kind of sort of like some machine gun that you aim by turning your head and you fire by blowing on it, which is just weird. It's kind of okay when you can actually get the wheel to turn, but it feels really shallow and lame in comparison to the blaster, which makes you feel super cool, which kind of plays as your typical rail shooter where you shoot aliens and it even has some boss fights. So that was kind of cool. It feels really good in your hands though. You can actually like cock back the gun and then you press the trigger and it's really immersive. It feels like you're actually shooting the enemies, which is exactly what I wanted from this thing. Of course, the game does encourage you to remain seated while playing, which I do agree with. You shouldn't do this outside. That was a very bad idea. But if you do want to have as much fun as possible, get yourself a swivel chair and just spin around. It's the best. But yeah, that's Labo VR. Do you guys remember being a kid crawling in some big box and turning it into a time machine? <laughs> that was a... Uh... That's what this really makes me feel like, but instead of using a big box, you're putting cardboard on your face and you're looking into a different dimension. It's real whimsical. It's, it's really it's really cool and fun. But anyways, did any of you guys get one of these? Uh, we read every comment, so be sure to tell us what you thought about yours. And thank you guys so much for watching the video. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new for tons of new videos. Uh, we're doing uh, game reviews, unboxings, movie news. We even do a live podcast every week, so uh, be sure to check that out. And with that, have yourselves a great one, and I'll see you next time.